Gradius is one of the best designed shoot 'em up series in existence. But what makes it so good? It has none of the insane bullet patterns of Toho, none of the innovative color swap systems of Ikaruga, and no shop system like UN Squadron has. Despite this, it manages to do something that even those great games can learn from, and that is in its sense of pacing. It manages to accomplish this through two key elements, the game's unique, dynamic power-up system and its intermediary stages that most players probably didn't even think anything about. For those of you who haven't played a Gradius game, the concept is simple. You guide your ship to the end of the stage while shooting enemies and dodging missiles, lasers, and floating Easter Island heads that want to kill you. You know, like most shoot 'em up games. Where it differs, however, is in its power-up system. Instead of picking up power-ups directly, some enemies instead drop red capsules. Once collected, these capsules move to a bar along the bottom of the screen, which represent different upgrades. These include speeding up your ship, powering up your weapons, granting you a shield, and so on and so forth. However, you don't immediately gain the power-up when it reaches the part of the bar that it corresponds to. Instead, you can choose to empty your bar entirely at any point and spend your capsules on the level that it's currently at. The beauty of this system is that it allows for dynamic decision-making while still offering a feeling of growth. By doing so, it keeps the pacing fast and the game exciting. Most games offer a simpler power-up system, where power-ups instantly change the player's attributes. That's fine, but it'll always lead to one of two issues. Either the player will constantly avoid power-ups if they don't want to change the setup they already have, or the player will constantly collect power-ups without thinking, making progression mindless. In Gradius, the player only has to press a single button to spend their capsules, yet is constantly thinking about what they need most. Is it more important to get more speed so I can dodge the flood of projectiles, or should I get missiles so I can destroy the enemies on the ground? By speeding up the pacing while still offering those kinds of questions, the game is made more reactive, more customizable, and more fun, which is ultimately what it's all about. That said, this system does run into its own unique problems. If there's no limit to the amount of power-ups, the player could become stronger than the game is able to handle. And if it does set a limit, then the game runs the risk of the player reaching it incredibly quickly. Because of this, if the player dies, all of their power-ups are down the drain, which is what the academic community calls a total bummer. But this encourages more cautious play, and grants extra emphasis when the player actually is super powerful, keeping Gradius as sort of the thinking man shoot him up, where positioning and analysis take an upper hand to twitch reflexes. But how does this well-paced system tie into the game's level design? Well, let's take Gradius 3, for instance. With the exception of the high-speed stage, the game's hardest part is its bosses. They take the longest to bring down, they have the fastest and most intense movement, they fire the most projectiles, and they have the most unique and unpredictable patterns. Since there will always be a boss, and since the boss will always be unique, this builds tension and anticipation within the player. They'll want to build up as many power-ups as they can, and then they'll make it to the boss, and chances are, even with all that build-up and all that strength, they'll die. A lot. Eventually, though, with careful management of resources given before the boss, some mad dodging skills, and a lot of determination, they'll beat it. And then, they'll hear this. Gradius 3 starts the game playing this music, so hearing it again sends a wave of nostalgia and catharsis through the player. The boss waits for a moment before it explodes, creating anticipation, and then there's a bit of silence right before the song kicks in, which doubles the feeling. It lets the player know that they can relax a little and will be rewarded, but does so without slowing the game's pace. The enemies in this stage mainly serve to refill your power-ups, but if you're not careful, they'll still destroy you like anything else. And that's the key distinction here. 
you're still earning these power-ups. The game could have a shop system like UN Squadron, but that would slow the game down and require money pickups, something the player doesn't immediately know will be especially useful and won't figure out until they're out of the action and making them fiddle around with menus instead of shooting things. After clearing a level, the game could just give you a menu to select a free power-up, like what Downwell does, but the player doesn't really earn these power-ups. The air battle stages seamlessly integrate that kind of decision-making you'd expect of a menu right into the action. Gradius 3 never slows down from start to finish, keeping the player engrossed and still being able to reward them for every action that they perform. And that is how you design for pacing.